What is up, YouTube? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new to the channel, I'm Joe Wilson. I make videos related to triathlon, where the swimming, biking, running, you'll find all those cool things right here on this channel. And guess what, guys? Since you're hearing my voice, I survived. Yep, it wasn't pretty, but I got to the finish line at Kona. Um, just want to give you guys a real quick recap on how my day went. Not well, but so it all started like this. Got the transition, got, you know, saw a bunch of friends, shake some hands, high five people, do all this stuff. Got in there nervous, not going to lie, you know, but I had my buddy Mark Cole, Cole with me and, you know, he, he, I think he was more nervous than I was. So it relaxed me out a lot. So anyway, saw the pros go off. Then we had an hour to sit around, which seemed like took five minutes um, before we were all getting in the water. And next thing I know, swim out there and they're telling us to get ready to go. And like me always, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. I'm like, yeah, we're all gonna die. Anyway, so the horn goes off for us and you know, it's a mad house, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, I caught some feet real early in the in the swim and swam and it felt great. I wasn't going too hard and I felt well within myself and I wasn't breathing heavy and I don't think my heart rate was going too too high. Um, and so got, before I knew it, I was at a turnaround. You know, you swim out about a mile, a little over a mile, then you do it like a little you know, 100 yards or maybe it's probably more like 50 yards uh, parallel to the shore and then you come back in. And so I did that and got around the boat, lost those feet. Then I jumped on some other feet and then I lost those feet, but then I was swimming and I know I was pulling somebody because somebody was on my feet for a while. And I was like, you know what? I'll pull them in, make me feel like a better swimmer. But then my goggles started leaking a little bit. So I had to kind of pull over to the side, fix that, got going again. Before I know it, we we're getting out of the water. I'm like, wow, that was pretty fast. I looked down at my watch. And I actually swam a 112, which was faster than Indiana the year before in a, in a wetsuit. So I felt really, really good coming out of the swim. You know, you could, I had so many like, there's so many pictures of me like smiling and being like, yay. So I go into transition and, and I, was, I was telling myself, take your time, take your time. So I put on socks, normally don't do that. Put on socks, um, put on some arm sleeves, my neck. Uh, I didn't put any um, sunscreen on and my neck got burnt. I mean, really, really burnt, but whatever, um, on the bike. And so come out, jump on the bike. We're going up a hill. So I'm like, okay, don't put your shoes on. Don't try to put your shoes on until you flatten out. Um, finally got my shoes in as we're going around the target, make a little circle, come back down that hill, ride out to... Uh, away from the bike course and by this time i'm riding there was like a ton of people around me and i'm just kind of trying to ease into it um but you know i kind of felt like okay you need to pick it up a little bit um as we're make that little turn and then come back i pass some people and i'm riding with some people i'm looking around and i'm like you know i'm probably faster than these people but whatever um you, you can never really tell and so it took me about 10 miles to kind of like get into a groove and I didn't want to, you know, I saw some packs go past me. I didn't want to do that. You know, didn't want to draft, uh, you know, get in a draft pack. So finally about 20 miles in, I started feeling pretty good and I'm, I'm riding, you know, 12 meters back or, you know, even by myself. And, but I, I realized that it was like a pretty, pretty decent headwind for me. Um, you know, and, and it's all cause how the winds change, you know, the earlier you're out there, the winds can move or whatnot. And so I had somewhat of a headwind more so than people who started an hour earlier, or even people that swam faster than me. Um, and so we're going out, you know, I'm not averaging quite 20 miles an hour, um, but I'm like, fine. I'm taking in fluids, trying to eat a lot of gels. I didn't really feel like I ever got hungry or, um, dehydrated or whatnot, but, you know, hindsight 2020, you know, I probably didn't take enough calories in on the, on the, on the, uh, on the bike. And I started feeling that 
as I was starting to get up to Javi, you know, about 60 miles in, you know, you're climbing, climbing to get to the turnaround. And uh, um, I, it, it, everything just got a little harder. You know, I just, I just realized like, this is not easy. It's like getting harder. And, but by this time we turn around and I start, you know, picking it up. Fewer people around me, and I see pe packs coming back this way. Even if they're not in a the pack, they're still around people, and that's helping block the wind, but whatnot, whatever. Um, I'm in my groove. And about this time, about mile 70, mile 80, it's like getting real hot on the bike. And um, and then it just, then the bike just kind of became hard. And I realized that I hadn't spent much time in aero you know, throughout in 2022, probably hadn't ridden my bike outside more than 30, 40 miles and I paid for it, you know, pretty dearly. Um, you know, going back into town, I'm, I was probably spending half the time up at Aero as much as I was spending in Aero. And luckily we were with, had somewhat of a tailwind. I think it was maybe five, 10 miles an hour, somewhat of a tailwind coming back in. But by this time, um, you know, it just, it was starting to hurt. And I'm like doing what I always tell people not to do. I'm trying to chase a mile per hour, trying to get it over 20 miles an hour. Um, I mean, the bike did feel good when I was in aero, but it just, I mean, my legs just kept getting heavy and heavier. And so by the time I got on the Queen K, you know, almost all the way into town, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I could tell I was tired, I was tired. And then on top of that, you're seeing people who had started an hour ahead of you, but you're starting to see people that are already running on the Queen K and you're like, wow, these people are gonna be done before I even get out of here. I mean, it, it's kind of demoralizing, but whatever. So I go into transition and I realized the pros had already finished before I even started my run. Um, and that kind of was a ding to the ego too, because I've never really been that guy who's like coming in off the bike I mean, I know they started an hour ahead of me, but they're coming into the finish line as I'm, they're already crossed the finish line before I even go, go on the run. I just can't let that bother me, but whatever. Anyway, go on the transition and I normally I can run in and, you know, put my shoes on and run out, but man, my legs just felt so heavy. And I'm like, I'm walking part of transition, you know what? I didn't have the fastest transition. My legs, I haven't felt this heavy, my legs this heavy since my first 70.3. Um, and I thought, well, get shoes on, you know, relax for a second or recover for a second as you're putting your shoes on, putting everything on and getting out there going. And I started running and I'm like, okay, my legs will pop back. And you know, I run to power, you know, use the stride power and nothing. You know, I was like, I'm running up and the crowds are cheering me and they're like pushing me on. And I run out on the Leahy Drive and I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. And I had a certain power number in my head that I thought I could push. I mean, I did 250-ish at Indiana and I thought maybe 240 at uh, Kona. But then I said, you know what? My legs are toast, 230. And so I started running and then ran out, you run up, you run down and you run all the way out Lehi Drive and you come back and that's about six miles and you run up and then you run up onto the Queen K. And I was fine through that. I was taking in liquids, you know, taking in fluids. I'm eating gels, you know, making sure I'm getting a lot of water. I'm walking all the aid stations. And then I get on Lehi, uh, on the Queen K on the highway and there's, you know, people already told me this, but there's nobody out there except for the other uh, uh, participants and the aid station. So we get out there and the first aid station, I was fine. I'm like high five people. Yeah, doing this one. Second one, mm, not so much. Third one, it became a six one, run six cones, walk one cone, which then turned out to be, you're gonna walk for a while. And long story short, I, I could not run and I watched people, person after person after person that I knew passed me and got into the energy lab and I just, I continued to walk, no running. I saw one photographer and I was like, okay, let's run. So it doesn't look like you're walking through here. I did that just for the uh, photo, but the rest of the time 
in a walk. I, the race broke me mentally on the Queen K. I'm not gonna lie. And, and so I didn't have anything. And walked through the whole energy lab. It started getting dark. Probably about my, I hit mile 20 and as, as it was getting dark, you know, people were like, oh, you should put one of those light things on. I'm like, I've never ever put a light on me in an Ironman. I'm, I was like, I'm not about to do it right now. But from mile 14, 13, until probably mile 24, when some guy saw me, I was like, hey, let's run up this hill. You got this, man, you got two miles. I walked, 95% of it. <sighs> Until we got back into town, and then we got into town, I'm seeing people who, and this has never happened before, I'm seeing people who are taking their bikes out, telling me, good job, man, good job. And that really hurt too, but anyway, I'm, I'm running down, you know, as you're getting down the hill, so you're turning onto Lee Drive, and I ran the rest of the way, and I, the, honestly, the legs really came back in those last two miles, and, you know, I saw some people out there, and I probably could run pa past them, but I was like, you know what, I don't care anymore, I let them, I let them go ahead of me. And then I saw the finish line. I saw my daughter, gave her a big hug, saw my friend Matt, high-fived him, told them thank you for being out there, and got onto the carpet. I let all the people, or the three people in front of me go ahead, made sure there was a space, turned around and made look to see if there's anybody behind me. There wasn't, and I walked. I took as much time as I could to get across that finish line because I wanted to experience everything that I worked for. Even though it was a bad race, even I didn't care, I'm at peace with it. I wanted to experience that finish line because it has taken me nine years to get to that point. So yeah, and my friend Ann was there and she caught the best picture of all time, of any race. I don't care. I'm used to have this one with the horns and, you know, me screaming across the finish line. To me, that finish line, me crying at the finish line is the greatest picture I will ever have of any race. So, yeah, I did five hours and 39 minutes in the run, but I'm at peace with it. I really am. I wasn't there to set any kind of records or get on the podium. I was there to get the medal and to enjoy my time there and soak it all up. And who knows? I don't think I'll ever go back. That's probably going to be my last Ironman. Probably, you know, I know 100% for at least a very, very long time it's going to be my last Ironman. But I will never say never. Um, who knows if I'll ever be there again. But I will have that experience of, you know, doing the race. Wasn't my best, like I said, but I'm happy with everything that transpired that whole week because I had so much fun. Met so many people. I got in Triathlete Magazine. Um, I had heard so many people call, call my name out. I spectated a lot on Thursday for the girls race. So if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do one thing different. Maybe, maybe it'd go a little bit easier on the bike, but I wouldn't do anything different. I had an amazing time and I hope you guys enjoyed all these videos related to the race. I want to take also, um, I had took a lot of videos and I'm going to put them all together and kind of do a montage, uh, put it on this channel and hopefully you guys can see some of the stuff that I was able to experience because it, Kona, I don't care what they say about the two day, the one day, they should move it or whatever, it is magical. And if you're a triathlete, it's it's like Disney World, you know, it's something that you have to experience, whether as a spectator or, or as, an, as a participant in the, in the race, you have to experience it. It's like no other race I've ever done in my entire life. It's just, it's just magical. So anyway, that's it, guys. That was my Kona story. I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. You know, kind of me just telling you guys everything I did during the week. Anyway, that's all I got. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all those cool things in YouTube. And I will catch you guys in the next video.
whatever that is. Peace.